Hey friend, I'm really excited to be able to talk to you about my next project. It's called Hemir. Hemir is a WordPress serverless DevOps platform. Yeah, it's a bit of a mouthful. What do I mean by serverless DevOps platform? Well, basically, it lets you deploy code on AWS-powered infrastructure that you own and manage through Emir. But instead of relying on traditional servers, everything runs off AWS Lambda. If you're familiar with Laravel Vapor, then you have a good idea of what Emir does already. That said, I didn't want to announce this project without being able to show it off to you. So the rest of this video is going to be about that. I prepared a small demo that I'm going to walk through with you. We're going to start with an empty directory. I run a quick ls command to show that it's empty. Next, I'm going to install WordPress with wpcli. I run the core download command to download WordPress. I follow it up with the config create command to create the local configuration for the demo WordPress site. That's all we need for the demo. Now it's time to deploy this new WordPress site with Emir. I locked myself out for the demo, so I need to log in first. I use the login command and enter my credentials. Once logged in, I'm going to initialize the project on Emir. To do that, I run the Emir init command. It asks me for the name of the new project. I then have to select an AWS region for the project. At this point, Emir detected that my current team doesn't have a database configured. I can choose to have it create one at the same time as I initialize the project. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to enter a name for the database. I choose the smallest database type. I enter 25 gigs for the maximum storage. I also want it to be a public database. After answering that last question, I'm shown the admin credentials for the new database. Below that, it tells me that the creation of the database and the project has begun. Emir will also try to detect whether I have the Emir plugin installed or not. Since this is a new WordPress installation, it asks me whether or not I want to install the plugin. I say yes, and it copies over the plugin to the plugins folder. I can't deploy a WordPress site until all the infrastructure gets provisioned on AWS. I can check the status of that using the Emir info command. This command will display all the information on our project and its environment we can see that the content delivery network and the database are still provisioning for the staging environment. You'll also notice that each environment got assigned a vanity domain. This ensures that each environment is always available. Emir will also let you manage your own domain and SSL certificates. At this point, I stopped the recording and waited about 10 minutes. I started recording again and then ran the Emir info command. At that point, AWS had finished provisioning both the content delivery network and the database. I start deploying the WordPress site using the Emir deploy command. The first phase of the deployment is the build phase. The build phase starts by making a copy of the WordPress site. It then injects WPCLI and checks that we have the Emir plugin installed. It also injects a must use plugin to always keep the plugin activated. It then edits the wp-config file and removes all the database constants. It also injects a configuration file to get these remove constants from environment variables. This ensures that your WordPress site connects to the right database once it's deployed. The last part of the build phase extracts your asset files from the build. Asset files are basically anything that isn't a PHP file. We want these asset files served using S3 instead of Lambda. It finishes by compressing the build into a zip file. That zip file then gets uploaded to a specific S3 bucket. Email will use that file when it creates a new Lambda version later. We then need to upload all these asset files that we extracted. Because this is a new WordPress site, we need to upload all these files to S3. This can take a certain amount of time. For this video, I sped this up. In reality, it took about three and a half minutes to upload all these files. With an existing project, it would only upload the modified asset files and copy the rest. This usually takes about 30 seconds. Once the asset's uploaded, the deployment begins. Deployment happens on the Emir platform. It interacts with various AWS services and makes necessary configuration changes. It also creates a new Lambda function version with the build that we uploaded earlier. I also sped up this section a bit. Deployment takes about a minute on average. Once the deployment completed, you can access the environment using the URL copied to the clipboard. Next, I switched over to my browser. I pasted in the environment URL, and this brought up the WordPress installation screen. 
I fill in all the necessary information while copying the generate password along the way. Once I'm done, I click install and the site gets created. I then log in using the Emir username and the password I copied earlier. In the admin, I go to the library page so that I can upload an image. The reason I want to show this is because with Emir, uploads don't work like they would with a normal server. That's because there are no servers to upload files to. Instead, we need to send your files to Amazon S3 directly. The goal of the Emir plugin was to make this process transparent to you. Uploading an image looks the same as it does on a normal server, but in reality, it's uploading the file to Amazon. To show that, I switch over to the S3 tab once I'm done uploading the image. I then refresh the asset storage for the environment, and now we can see the uploads folder there, and we can see the image and all its different versions. After that, I go back to the WordPress site tab I go to, from the media page to the post page so that I can edit the Hello World post. I add an image block and select the uploaded image from the media library. Once the image added, I update the post, exit the editor, and go to the home page. We can see the image there. It's being served through the configured content delivery network. The last thing I wanted to show was the default performance of the website. So I jumped to PageSpeed Insights and entered the environment URL that I copied. I ran it, but it didn't play out exactly as I expected. The mobile score was just 89, which is on the low side. The desktop was 100. I ran it again because I assumed there was a cache priming issue. The second run came in at 94, which is more in line with what I was expecting with my testing. So that wraps up the first demo of Emir. I hope this made you as excited about this project as I am. There's still a good amount of work to do and things I'd like to support. But if you'd like to get updates and know when it goes into beta, just subscribe at emirapp.com.